My name is Chris Fru. I'm the CEO of BioBuzz. I'm excited today to have Emergent Biosolutions here with us for a virtual recruiting event. Um, just wanted to start off, just give you a little bit of a housekeeping for today. The event should last about an hour, and um, uh, we will provide a recording afterwards. So if you have to jump off, um, you know, we're very empathetic to today's situation. We know many of you have children at home um, uh, and are juggling multiple priorities. So we will make sure we provide the recording to you after the event as well. Um, if you have any questions, we encourage you to use the, the chat, uh, the Q&A feature. Uh, Jen will talk a little bit more about that. And, um, and make sure you're using the chat also. The chat is a, a feature that uh, puts your questions and comments out there for everybody to see. So I have a very small role today and, from, uh, and, and this really concludes it. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jennifer Grubb, who's HR business partner for Emergent Biosolutions uh, Bayview facility. And uh, Jen, I'll uh, let you kick it off. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Grubb. I'm part of the HR team here at Emergent. I'm the site HR lead for our Baltimore Bayview site. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone for their time today. I really appreciate um, you carving out time to spend with us for the next hour. Um, and so I want to welcome you, officially welcome you to our first virtual recruiting event. Um, I'm really excited to just share some information on Emergent. I think this is going to be, the next hour is going to be pretty, pretty uh, hoping and engaging. Uh, so during this event, we are going to, you're going to be able to meet um, a few of our dynamic leaders and they're going to be taking you through a little bit uh, around what Emergent is about as well as um, a deeper dive, um, some more insight into the manufacturing that we do at our Baltimore Bayview uh, location. Um, at the end of the presentation, we've carved out time to hear from you. So answer some of your questions that you might have. So, um, you know, definitely as we go through the presentation, think of some of the questions that you might have for us and um, we'll open up the, the Q&A uh, session. But before I hand it off to our first presenter, I'd like to introduce uh, Linda Gillen, who is our Director of Talent Acquisition, as well as uh, Joe Seely. Joe Seely is our one of our senior talent, hey Joe, talent um, acquisition mm -hmm. partners. So Joe and Linda are going to be partnering with me behind the scenes to help uh, field some of the questions and just keep things flowing during the um, Q&A session. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to BJ, who is our VP and general manager for our Maryland um, manufacturing sites. Well, thank you very much, Jen. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here and have a little uh, emergent presentation to walk everybody through. Um, so um, just want to introduce you, give you a high level view of emergent and what's so great about our organization. And if you look at our promise here, it really says a lot. Emergent delivers peace in mind in an uncertain world. And Emergent is really a biopharmaceutical company, um, and we're focused on producing products that protect and enhance lives. Um, over 10 years ago, you know, we had just one product, um, Biothrax, and the company has really grown over the past 10 years with this focus on a peace of mind in an uncertain world. Matter of fact, our vision for the organization is by 2030, we expect to protect or enhance 1 billion lives, which is a huge impact for you know, both the organization as well as patients around the world. And really this is the vision that gives the organization its passion um, and its direction for everything that we're doing today. So who are we today? So Emergent has over 1,800 employees. Um, we have 10 marketed products. Uh, we have a market cap. We're traded on the New York Stock Exchange of over $3 billion. Total revenue last year of over a $1 billion. Um, we've got 19 global locations. We have 15 plus products in our pipeline. And we have this molecule to market CDMO service 
um, which is a lot about what we'll talk today. So let's talk about emergent a little bit at the higher level. Um, so as a company, we're divided up into four business units. We have a vaccines business unit. For example, this is where our anthrax vaccine portfolio would be. We have a therapeutics group where we would make things like hyperimmunes for people. Um, we have a devices group where our opiate addiction products would be of Narcam. And then we have our CDMO group where we provide services from molecule um, to market services for other clients in need. So let's look at um, our marketed products. So first of all, we have an anthrax um, portfolio. We have anthracil, um, AV7909, Biothrax, as well as Raxibacumab. These are all products that are used for the threat of anthrax, of a biological attack. We have another franchise called Smallpox, where we have ACAM 2000, which is a vaccine for smallpox. And then we have um, our VGIV product, which is more of a hyperimmune um, or a therapeutic for smallpox. We have our travel and health group. We have uh, Vaxcora, um, and we also have a typhoid vaccine in the travel health group. In the opioid group, we have a Narcan product, which many of you may have heard about in the news. It's a wonderful product for people that might OD on opioids. And then we have this chemical group. Um, we have RSDL, which is a decam decontamination kit for the skin in the event you're uh, around chemical warfare. And we also have a Trobagard um, injector that is used in the field by soldiers. And finally, we have our botulism um, group um, with our bat product to do that. So if you see over here to the right, this is really the market that the company is playing in. Um, emerging health crisis, infectious disease, acute emergency care. Um, and these are the areas as well as travel health that the company focuses on as we develop, develop products for the market. Focusing on our services group for a moment, um, if you look at our molecule to market CDMO offering, and we have all of these in the uh, Maryland area, which, which makes it great for the organization. We have development services, we have drug substance manufacturing, and we also have drug product packaging all in the uh, Maryland area. So that really gives us a sustainable competitive advantage in the market. Um, we have a foundational marketing approach. We have a great science and technology team. We're industry leading track record of bringing products to market. We have a speed and flexibility to market that really drives a lot of our business for clients. Um, and it's a really tailored individualized integrated offering that we provide um, with the site so close together in the, the Maryland area. And we also have um, the Bayview site specifically, as well as the other sites that take part in this as a center of innovation and advanced development and manufacturing um, for the government specifically. So if we look at our offerings around this CDMO group and we look at the manufacturing capabilities that Emergent has, you can see from the top down, we've got our Baltimore, Maryland site um, this is the Bayview site that we'll be talking to you about today, where we make drug substance manufacturing. We have our Baltimore Camden site, which does small molecule um, fill finish, as well as biological fill finish. Um, we also, in this area, we have our Gaithersburg, Maryland, where we do our development activities. We have our Rockville, Maryland site, where we do viral fill finish activities. And that really focuses the effort on the Maryland area. And you can see the other sites that we also have in the organization. So really, um, you know, one of the things you may have heard about very recently is all the talk about COVID and our involvement in COVID. 
And from the presentation, you can see that really for many years, uh, the company has been invested in this protecting pa patients, protecting lives, as well as preparing ourselves for pandemic response. And the Bayview facility specifically was really designed around pandemic response. So you've probably seen a lot of publicity about the company and our COVID products. And we currently are in the process of uh, manufacturing at some point or developing three products for clients right now. So we're really in the midst of this COVID response. And you know, while nobody wants a pandemic to happen, the company was really prepared to react to this type of situation. You know, in our past, we have done development in the influenza area, Ebola and Zika, and we're really designed for this type of response. You know, we have great relationships with the government and we collaborate with the government researchers as well as regulators. So while we're also helping, you know, other companies develop their vaccines for COVID, we're also developing our own therapeutic as well for the COVID. So the company is really in the midst of this. So, you know, if you take a look at us from a whole, you know, we're a growing organization. We're in a very exciting field. Um, so this is something that you're really passionate about. Uh, Emergent is a great place to work. Um, our most recent COVID project, we have already completed the drug substance on. We've done the fill finish and it's on its way to um, clinical trials right now. So a lot of great activity going on in there. And the last thing I'll say about the COVID is really the fact that the company is really about protecting employees. Um, we understand the challenges that are, we're all faced with today. We have many people that are working from home. Uh, for essential people that are going into the offices, we have a lot of control mechanisms in place to protect people to make sure that we're focused on the right things. So that's probably all I have for today. Very excited to be part of this. I uh, hope you learn a lot about the company today. And if you have questions, please reach out with the Q&A as was already talked about, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. And then I think I am turning it over to Scott. Hello. Uh, so my name is Scott Kelly. I'm the director of manufacturing here at the Bayview facility. Uh, and just so people know, I'm actually on site today. So this is not an attempt at high fashion. This is my face covering for being on site. Uh, so before we uh, I give an introduction to the facility itself and uh, what makes us unique in this industry, uh, first I'd like to say a little bit about myself. I've been an emergent for nine years. I've uh, been in biotech since 1995 and I'm a Baltimorean, lifelong Baltimorean, uh, and attended UMBC and University of Maryland. And uh, I've actually been in this building since 1996. Uh, so hopefully, knock on wood, I'll be in the building for a, a while more. Uh, so I actually have some uh, slides I'd like to walk through. And even though I uh, operate millions of dollars worth of equipment each day and highly complicated processes, we're gonna see how this Zoom goes. Can everybody see that? All right. So the first slide is, uh, I'm just gonna give like some basic overview slides. So like I said, the facility itself opened up in 1996 as a CDMO and the building was built by the state of Maryland and licensed out to a company called Bioscience Contract Production. So over the years, the name of the company's changed, the building didn't, until eventually being Lanza, and Emergent acquired the building uh, from the state of Maryland in 2009. So the first thing Emergent did was uh, gut the original building in order to uh, reconfigure for our very unique uh, technology, which was a single-use platform, uh, flexibility and rapid uh, ability to respond. So as previously mentioned, Emergent's niche is emerging threats and rapid response. So in order to do that, we needed a very unique building uh, that we could bring in different products, different formats, and not have to worry about cross-contamination. And then there's a little note here that uh, as far as biopharmaceuticals go, our building uh, will be licensed in 2021 for an emergent product called Raxibaclomat, and it is a therapeutic, a monoclonal antibody uh, for use after anthrax exposure. So 2012 is when we actually started uh, operating here in the single-use formats. 
And what we've been able to do here is a variety of different products and processes. So we've done viral vaccines, uh, we've done therapeutics, we've done nanoparticle vaccines, subunit inactivated protein vaccines, monoclonals, uh, bispecifics, and some of the targets of those that kind of give the idea of, of why we're purpose built. Uh, we've been able to produce products that target NEPA, anthrax, tuberculosis, uh, flu, both pandemics, universals, uh, Ebola, uh, ricin exposure, uh, different cancers, and of course, uh, COVID-19. So with all those different types of products, uh, we've also uh, had different platforms we've used. So some of them are viral, like a modified vaccinia Ankara, adenovirus, baclovirus, we've done microbial systems. Uh, everybody's probably familiar with E. coli. We've also done a version of Bacillus anthracis, mammalian cell culture, avian cell culture, and insect cell culture. And we're able to do all those different formats and technologies within the building with rapid changeovers. And uh, part of the thing that makes us unique about the staff is all the staff uh, get to work on and specialize on each of those platforms. So we don't hire people who are specifically virologists and they stay virologists or they specialize in cell culture. Uh, when we hire people, we do a lot of cross training and everyone becomes uh, essentially an expert in all those formats. So just to give an idea of the, uh, the setup from a technical standpoint. So as with a lot of biopharmaceuticals, pharmaceutical companies were broken into the upstream and the downstream uh, departments. So in upstream, we use single use formats and we use up to 2000 liters of the GE Accelerex system. And we also have ABEX systems that are up to 4,000 liters. Uh, so those are currently the largest single use bioreactors in use uh, in the world. Uh, so the upstream group, uh, as you can see from the pictures, they focus on everything from those early shake flask manipulations, aseptic technique. It's a very operator driven, uh, and you have to develop that skill set through training and demonstrated ability to perform it. Uh, and then there's uh, the more of the automated. So there's also pictures of bioreactors, uh, both in the lower area and upstairs in area four. So downstream, again, clinical to uh, commercial manufacturing. Uh, again, we like to focus primarily on single-use systems, although when it comes to columns, uh, oftentimes clients or processes will have dedicated equipment. So columns, resins, uh, they're gonna be used just for that process and then moved off-site afterwards. So we talk about the facility itself. So area one and area two, that's the original part of the building. Uh, and those are mirror images of each other and those rooms are specifically built with the idea of containment prevention of cross-contamination. Uh, we handle up to BSL-2 organisms, and those areas can operate at the same time, so concurrent manufacturing and different products. There's a picture of area two, so you get to see uh, some of the 2,000 liter bioreactors, and some of our staff members that are setting up the bioreactor. So then area three, so area three was actually built more recently within the past couple of years. Uh, so we do a lot of work for BARDA, it's a, an acronym you'll hear a lot, and that's the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. And they were formed mainly to uh, help the government respond through stocking the national stockpile through various drugs, treatments of vaccines. Uh, and then they also uh, got into the business of being able to respond to the pandemic threat. So everybody remembers back to H1N1 and uh, how quickly the world saw that there could be pandemic flu. So they reached out and three different facilities were selected, we're one of them, and we built a facility uh, with the original intent of being able to respond to a pandemic flu. So within four months, we can crank out about 50 million doses were the original uh, plan. Since that time, we use that facility for a variety of, uh, of operations. So it goes up to the 4,000 liter scale, uh, and it is, uh, there's one product at a time up there. So it's multi-use, but it's not concurrent. And there's a shot from upstairs in area three, and that's a downstream group. And then there's a smaller pilot plant, we call it the GMP space, again, BSL-2, and it operates at the 50 liter scale. And the primary use of that area would be earlier phase projects and also to do scale down models of uh, commercial products. 
And there is a picture of area four. And that's it for me. I will now turn it over to the managers uh, from my group. Let me get out of this uh, whole screen thing. If we're back. Uh, so I'd like to introduce you to uh, Chad Anderson and Jason Jenkins. So Chad Anderson, he also has been here nine years. He came to Emergent uh, via the University of Nebraska, where the N stands for knowledge. And Jason Jenkins, who came to us all the way from Essex across the Back River Birch. So I'll turn it over to Jason. <laughs> oh, all right. So my name is Jason Jenkins, again, I'm from Essex. Uh, I graduated from Towson. I've been with Emergent for, like Scott said, nine years. I've been in industry uh, since uh, 2001. Um, so Chad and I are going to kind of walk through um, some roles and responsibilities of the lead, the senior, um, and associates. Um, and then we're going to go through some, uh, a little bit of uh, what upstream does versus downstream. And then we're going to go through some of the kind of uh, different stuff we do, culture activities, and um, some CSR, so our corporate social responsibility activities that we do. Um, so let me try to figure out how to share this here. Or hit the right button. All right. So, upstream tasks. Uh, Scott was talking a little bit about aseptic skills. Um, so, upstream, everything we do uh, has to maintain sterility of the uh, cell line. So, we do that through a lot of uh, training um, in up, uh, aseptic skills. Um, so, those are done. In, within a BSC using uh, pipettes, sterile pipettes, uh, we have sterile gloves, sterile sleeves, um, and that's for the bile thaw and all shake flesh manipulations. Um, once we're out of the BSC and into more of the reactors, we do that through a series of aseptic connectors, uh, depending upon the brand. Um, we go from half inch up to three, or up to an inch now, um, and that allows us to connect and still maintain sterility out in the uh, grade C in the open environment. Um, so once we grow up our cells in within the shake flasks, we then transfer the cells to um, one of varying sizes of bioreactors that allow us to just grow more and more cells. So that's the whole thing that we're doing all along until we get to the point where we're ready to seed the production reactor, which is where we actually start kind of churning out the, the product of choice. Um, as Scott said, we do uh, multiple, we do mammalian cell culture, um, we'll do some microbial work, um, and also uh, one of the uh, responsibilities that the uh, associates, seniors have are we make all of our uh, components, all of our assemblies, our tubing assemblies, and we also autoclave our materials, um, and we are responsible for making all of our solutions. So let me go on to the next slide. So some of the roles in the upstream group, um, the lead role, they are the uh, uh, project subject matter experts. So they're the ones who are uh, working with our ms &T group to help transfer the product over. Um, they're responsible for the scheduling. Um, they're responsible for the run execution and they work with our ms &T group if we have some in-process troubleshooting that has to occur. Um, and they are also the responsible for batch record creation or revision, um, which is fun, um, especially in a pandemic. So typically a process could take uh, four to six months to transfer in. Um, so we kind of have enough time to make sure we're uh, writing our batch records. Uh, in a pandemic, we literally uh, just turned over batch record in three days. Um, so that's record time. More of the uh, senior role. Um, the senior is the right-hand person to the lead. Um, they're responsible for on-the-floor execution. Um, they train the more uh, junior-level people. Um, they set up all the processing steps, so they're responsible for making sure that the reactor bag set up, that it's batched, that all the connections are made properly. Um, and then they also create and um, review specifications. And then the associate level, or I, I think we call it associate two in the slide presentation, um, it's one and the same. Um, again, they're responsible for, uh, they're assisting more of the senior 
uh, MA. Um, they do the bulk of the uh, assembly prep, um, filter prep. Um, they do the bulk of the solution prep as well. And they're responsible for autoclaving all the materials, all the assemblies we make. Um, and then I think at this point, I believe it's Chad Anderson. He will take uh -huh. over for the downstream. Yeah, awesome. So I'm Chad Anderson. Um, like uh, Jason and Scott, I've been here since 2011. Uh, been in industry since 2001 um, and uh, really enjoy my time here at Emergent. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was just kind of what is downstream. So downstream, uh, the team here is responsible for isolating, segregating, and purifying uh, the molecule of interest. Uh, we have the ability to purify many different molecules here, uh, at kind of as Scott mentioned. Uh, we've done uh, antibodies, virus, virus-like particles, nanoparticles. Um, you know, we could do lots of other things as well. Um, Typically, at the end of a downstream process, the, the drug substance uh, is greater than 99% pure and is very stable and is ready to put into, put into vials. So um, as BJ was mentioning, we're the, we, we manufacture drug substance and we put those into uh, small containers and then ship them uh, to a filler and they put them into vials. So, uh, and sorry, Jason's going to run the slide, so I'm going to have to say next slide. Ah. <laughs> What? Which one do you want, Chad? You're, you're the next one. Oh, hold on a second. Seven. Have... Perfect. Uh, so um, a lot of the downstream processing is centered around uh, chromatography, and we use two different types of chromatography methods here. Uh, we will use a conventional method, which is uh, you know, traditional resins and, and traditional columns. Um, and we also use membrane chrom chromatography, which is essentially charged uh, filtration, or charged filters, I'm sorry. Um, we operate at all different scales. So as Scott mentioned, you know, we can do everything from 50 to 4,000. So um, we've used uh, columns from 10 centimeter diameter up to 80 centimeters diameter. Um, the filters are a little bit more difficult to describe in terms of scale up, but needless to say, we have, uh, We've used small ones and, and uh, very large ones. So um, it's hard to really describe that um, unless you've seen them. Uh, so, and yeah, we perform uh, a lot of traditional varieties of, of chromatography that, that I'm sure you'd be um, aware of. So ion exchange, affinity, and, and size exclusion. Um, a variety of filtration steps uh, are performed here, uh, but it's all based on the process and what we're trying to remove or to purify. Um, we use all different types of filters and holders and manufacturers, so um, you'd be exposed to a lot of different techniques and a lot of different uh, uh, products, which is awesome. Um, and finally, uh, we're also responsible for uh, the viral inactivation for some products, so, um, you know, it's all, it's all different. It's all based on, on the, the process itself. Can you go to the next slide? So, everything else. Um, so, so it's, it's not all about purification. Um, one, of the, the, one of the big labor draws that we have for the downstream team is buffer prep. So we use a lot of different solutions for uh, the chromatography filtration work. So we're constantly making buffers. We have, uh, we have multiple types of tanks that we, that we use here, uh, stainless steel tanks and single use mixers. So it, it's all dependent on the process and where we're executing, uh, but the batches can be as small as one liter and can be as large as 3000 liters. Um, you know, we, we, we also have to make disposable assemblies to use during the process. Um, so some of those assemblies can be, it's just a simple piece of tubing with maybe a connector on it, um, or they can be as complex as, uh, as a TFF skid flow path with multiple sensors and, and meters and pumps and, and so forth. So it all depends on, on what we're doing. Um, another big thing that we, that we have to handle is, is quality of notifications and documentation. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we would, we would never have to write deviations, but we, we don't live in a perfect world. So deviations are, are just part of the work. Um, we try to get them closed as soon as possible and work closely with our QA group to get the correct information in the write-ups. Um, we are also constantly writing and revising documents, whether it be to, you know, due to continuous improvement or whether we're changing how, uh, changing how we do things. It truly never ends, and uh, there's, always, there's always documentation uh, to, to take care of. Can you go to the next one, please? Absolutely. Yeah, and so uh, this is my last slide. Um, so, so really, I just just wanted to talk about why why I think you guys should uh, join the team, right? So, um, kind of as Scott and BJ mentioned before, we're we're growing as a company and as a site. 
Um, you know, we have signed deals in place with multiple companies and government agencies for COVID work, as well as uh, other products. So um, there's always something new to learn and to experience. And, you know, we need people at all levels. So manufacturing associates through, um, you know, bioprocess specialists. So uh, all sorts of different levels from entry to, to experience, we need, we need them all. Um, we're, we're still trying to increase our, our manufacturing capacity here at the site. So there'll be lots of opportunities uh, to grow with the company and, and within the team. Um, you know, so, so uh, yeah, so there's just, there's just gonna be a lot of extra work or not extra work, but a lot of work that, that needs to be done. Um, and kind of as Scott mentioned, we have a, we have a very unique facility uh, that we, we try to utilize single use technologies as much as we can. So if you join the team, you'd get exposure to a lot of cutting edge equipment and uh, would be exposed to the ideas uh, around the single use platforms that we employ, which is awesome. Um, you know, and so, so Jason is gonna talk about this a little bit more, but um, you know, we have a lot of fun at work and I know that we both really strive to make the environment somewhere where people like to be. We want folks to look forward to coming to work. You know, we try to do as many team events as possible and you know, we all, we all try to get to know each other on a personal level. So really it's, it's all about the team and uh, we can't have success without each other. So it's a very important, um, you know, the other thing that I, that I just want to mention is that, you know, if, if you choose to join our team, you know, you would be a key part in protecting and enhancing lives. Um, as I mentioned, we are heavily involved in the, in the COVID vaccine work, but we also make biodefense products, um, you know, as well as treatments for community acquired diseases, you know, like, as Scott mentioned, like influenza. So, Everything we do um, helps someone and can save lives. So it's, it's very rewarding work. Um, and yeah, that's all I'll, I'll say about that stuff. And, and Jason's gonna take it back over and, and kind of talk about uh, some of the culture. Yeah, so like Chai was saying, um, we're both very, uh, we, our groups are very team oriented. We're um, one big happy family. Um, and you know, if, if everything were to work out, you know, you could come on board and kind of help save the world right now. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through some pictures of uh, just some of the things that we do. So this is the team that is currently working on the uh, COVID project that we have going on. Um, and that is our KSEP centrifuge. That was our first time in uh, using a single use uh, centrifuge. It was fun. So to Chad was saying, you'll be seeing a lot of uh, new and innovative uh, technologies um, if you were to come on board. Um, this is the team actually uh, getting ready to do our first uh, viling. This is, we were viling the uh, Master C virus for the COVID project. Um, so this picture here, we're, this is the group that uh, had the fun-filled pleasure of running the Sonicator. Um, and we have to obviously wear some safety pre precautions. So earmuffs were involved because the Sonicator is very, very loud. Uh, and uh, if you were to come on board, you'll find out I'm very loud. Uh, I'm just a very loud talker. <laughs> I, I was a teacher for a year, uh, so I became very, very loud. Um, and over here on the right, that was the uh, completion of our first successful engineering run for the RAXI program. Um, so that was a great big accomplishment. Um, so you can kind of, I just wanted to uh, show the difference. So the picture on the left is the Area 3 group. Um, so that's how they gown. Um, and then the picture on the right is the area one, two. So that would be how we gown in viral mode. Um, so it's, it, it's fun. It gets very hot, uh, unfortunately, but it, we have a lot of fun together. Um, Chad, anything to chime in on? No, uh, just the fact that like you just mentioned, right? So we try to make it as fun as possible uh, while still getting the work done. Um, and I think that's important. I think, uh, you know, the, the, the more, the more we enjoy each other, uh, the less it seems like work. Yeah, so we, we spend a lot of hours together. Um, so again, we, we, you become very close and it's, it's a very family oriented group that we have. Um, so outside of work, we also have some culture activities. Um, so we have site sponsored ones and we also have a kind of a manufacturing culture um, we do potlucks, we do Memorial Day and Labor Day cookouts. Um, we have bowling. Um, bowling is usually a, a pretty big hit. Um, we have gone for Earth Day. We've gone to uh, Canton and helped clean up uh, Canton Square. Um, we've done some fantastic team building activities. Uh, we 
we've done a couple scavenger hunts. Uh, we do happy hours. And then we, uh, one of the manufacturing uh, culture activities was we had a Halloween party. Um, and you'll see some fun filled pictures of the Halloween party <laughs> in it. Um, and then CSR, it's our corporate so uh, social responsibility activities. Um, so we're very big into giving back to the community. Um, so we do Meals on Wheels, we do Barkstoberfest, um, we have blood drives on site uh, like quarterly, um, Night Delight, and then we do Mugs for Love. So I yeah, and I'm just going to, I'm going to jump sorry. in there real quick. I'm sorry. Um, so one of the things that, that Emergent does a fantastic job with is, is the CSR. And, um, you know, they, they donate, a, and I'm not sure what the number is off the top of my head, but they donate a lot of money to a lot of great organizations. And I personally um, have folks, or I, I personally uh, have, have Emergent donate uh, money to uh, uh, the University of Maryland Shock Trauma Center uh, on a yearly basis. And they always do it. And it's always very well appreciated and, and well received. So it's, it's something that I think Emergent does really, really well. Sorry, Jason. No, 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 absolutely. All right, so I'll just kind of go through some of the pictures. Um, so one of the things that uh, we do as a manufacturing group, we have a journal club. Um, so when we kind of have a little bit of, of free time in between runs, we, we have our journal club and that's the picture of it. Um, and this is a picture of our CSR for Night Delight. Um, here's Barktoberfest, everyone loves dogs. Um, Meals on Wheels. And then happy hour. And then this is honestly just the crew having fun at work. Um, <laughs> and then this is our fantastic uh, Halloween party. Um, Destiny <laughs> here, she, she's in charge of the manufacturing kind of culture committee. Um, so we actually, uh, this is one of our bioprocessing specialists. He uh, dressed up as the uh, gentleman to the right. And then I'm going to end it with, uh, this is a, uh, me dressed up as uh, Fred Flintstone with uh, one of uh, our associates. Uh, she's a senior associate. Uh, yeah, she is rolling her eyes at me. So, all right. And uh, back to Jen, maybe? I'm sure it's back to Jen. <laughs> well done, guys. That was awesome. I love the photos. So now um, I think we're going to be opening it up to our question and answer session. I see quite a few questions have already come in and I think there's quite a few that are directed towards um, manufacturing. So uh, I think Scott, you grabbed, a, you grabbed one. Um, yeah, I grabbed a couple. You, you want to take, take the ones you grabbed? Yeah, I did a couple of a variety of uh, both technical and non-technical. One of the questions was, how long does it take to switch a facility over from one product to another? And that's actually a great question uh, and is really key to uh, our facility and what makes it unique. So since we do microbial, uh, cell culture, and viral products, we need to have a very effective, uh, easy to execute changeover procedure. So for something like going from a mammalian uh, cell culture project to another, we can accomplish changeover uh, literally in a day or two, mainly because it's all single use. So we're not cleaning equipment, we're just disposing of trash and moving all the materials from one project out to another. If we're switching over from say a microbial project to something else, uh, we then also do a little bit of extra environmental monitoring to make sure that we don't recover uh, the organism of interest. Uh, so if we suddenly pick up uh, this uh, recombinant E. coli in a room, then we know we need to do a little better uh, cleaning. When we're switching over from viral is where it becomes key, and that's where we also put in the added step of uh, decontaminating the whole area using vaporized hydrogen peroxide. Uh, so uh, that step, actually all the equipment, all the electronics, everything is treated with VHP. Uh, then there's biological indicators. When they come back as clean, then the room can be released for further manufacture. So it's actually a great question because from a regulatory perspective, uh, technical and quality perspective, being able to change over from all those different formats is really crucial to our operation. Uh, so another question was, are we focusing mainly on the COVID, specifically the J&J &J vaccines, or do we have our own? And what I'll say to that point is, uh, there's other COVID projects than just J&J &J that got a lot of press. We're actually working on one uh, for Novavax. So that one just entered phase one 
clinical trials. And Novavax just got a lot of money from an organization called CEPI to continue that program. So then there's the J&J &J program. And there's another uh, program that's uh, been press releases called Vaxart. It again is a, a COVID vaccine and it's unique in that it's an oral vaccine. So it's viral and it's a, an oral uh, vaccine. As far as our own projects, uh, we currently are still uh, in our building to have our ongoing uh, RAXI pro program in order to uh, complete commercialization of that project. And we're doing some scale down work uh, to that end. So Emergent is really a mix of uh, our own projects and uh, uh, what we'll call commercial items. And in a time like COVID, then the federal government, BARDA, will also reach out to us uh, with requests to complete some projects, which we're more than willing to do. And it really helps demonstrate uh, our ability to execute and be effective. And then I will do, there was a, one question about um, cross-training upstream and downstream. And really that's a, a key point I wanna get across to everyone that even though uh, people are hired to staff in a, dirt, a certain department. So as we do head counts and labor builds, we have to assign people to a department. The goal is always to cross train. Uh, so under normal circumstances, it's to keep people engaged in their job, to always continually learn. People like to learn things. And in a situation uh, like we're going through now with the COVID, it's also critical such that if we have uh, uh, staff members who start to get sick or need to self quarantine for 14 days, we have enough people to keep operating. So it's imperative that we keep operating and we do so safely and we protect the building and the personnel. If everybody gets sick and those vaccines, uh, they're gonna stall. So cross training is more than just uh, keeping people engaged as I would normally say, it's also about protecting these products and keeping everything on track. Any other questions? Uh... I think you got them all. What's that? I think you got so here's them. a great question about our philosophy on uh, keeping people motivated and the culture <laughs> and uh, how it's a typical day. <laughs> so uh, the manufacturing group, we're kind of a, an interesting uh, uh, group here. And we really operate and I almost call it a flexible manner in that the groups, Jason and Chad and their groups, they know what work needs to be done. Uh, and they know my expectations and the site's expectations. Therefore, they can schedule and deploy their people as needed to get those tasks uh, done. And that's how we were also able to work in a lot of these fun activities. Uh, so right now, it's a bit different with the COVID in that we only want people on site when they have to be here. And so again, uh, Jason and Chad are able to schedule uh, specific shifts or activities and then everyone else is home. Uh, so even when you're home, there's still a lot to do. So currently, you know, there's a lot of procedures. Everyone's engaged here in uh, writing procedures, and you can also do training from home. Uh, so that, that really goes to keeping people motivated and that you're not going to, we don't believe in sticking people in a position where you're just coming in and hitting a button every day. And I think that sometimes when you hear manufacturing, that's what you think, uh, but it's a lot more than that. Uh, we like people that are, are thinking outside the box, always looking to improve things. We have an OE program where we're always looking to improve the efficiency and reduce waste. Uh, so that's another thing we do to keep people motivated and on point. There's there a question about the- oh, Go ahead. I was oh, going to say there was a number of questions about different levels of people that we hire and, and what type of people we're looking for. And, and really we're hiring all levels of people right now. Um, people with no skills uh, that are new to the industry, we have roles for them all the way up to people with PhDs. Um, and while this is a event focused in manufacturing, we're really hiring in all different groups right now. Um, so if, you know, focus on the, the lab areas where we've got a number of uh, available positions in our lab areas, um, in the supply chain, in ms and uh, engineering. So there's hiring going on at all different levels, all different groups. And quite honestly, at the different sites in the Maryland area. So Bayview isn't the only one hiring. Uh, we're hiring at Camden facility, at the Rockville facility, um, as well as Gaithersburg. Um, so there are plenty of opportunities available for people at all levels. And really, as, as Scott mentioned, you know, it's about being passionate about what you do. Um, people that are successful with our organization 
are passionate about what they do. Um, you know, they like to be very innovative in coming up with solutions. They like having fun. Um, and we are a heavily regulated industry. So you have to understand that. You have to understand that documentation is critical and that being detail oriented is a must in our industry. Yes, and I just add on from the manufacturing group here. So we really range uh, in our education experience level. So even though the manufacturing group actually has a pretty high percentage of undergraduate and graduate degrees, which is unusual, uh, we also, one of our most experienced, effective uh, staff members is a high school graduate. So it's really that combination of uh, people who graduate college and are looking for that uh, technical aspect of the field. And people are just great workers and engaged and uh, also do well. So it's really up to, we don't limit people by uh, education, uh, work experience, it's really up to you to decide how far you wanna go and how quickly. Uh, we really avoid the idea of you're here for a certain amount of time, you move to the next level. Here for a certain amount of time, move to the next level. It's really based on performance. It's a performance-based uh, system to reward people who are high performers and, and that's where we go. So it's looking to the positive. Hey Jen, there was one quick. There was one question about continuing education and, and yeah. that program. I didn't know if you saw that one. Um, I just saw it. So okay. yeah, yep. So we um, as you know, as you go through the um, recruitment process, that there is a high level um, benefit overview, and part of the benefits is uh, continuing education that we help support uh, if folks want to uh, continue their education as a as a regular full time employee. So that's definitely part of our benefit package. There was, one, a, there was one for you, Chad, was or you were gonna talk to about I actually think Scott, I think Scott took okay. it, which is fine. Um, <laughs> Good uh, going, Scott. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I texted him. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, uh, there, there was one that, that says, uh, can you elaborate on the timelines of projects? So, um, so <laughs> that's actually pretty, that's a great question. So um, it all depends really. So we've had we've had projects that you know are on on a traditional path where um, you know it, we brought a, brought something in did engineering batches you know took a year um, went to PPQs that type of that type of work um, you know would in what I would consider as as normal um, and then you know there's timelines for COVID or Ebola which are um, crazy and you know it's all about getting those products to the clinic to to get them into phase one trials and to see if, if they work. So, you know, um, there was a, an Ebola uh, project that we did and I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe it was, uh, we, we essentially took it from, from a cell build to uh, in the clinic in, in four months, um, which was which is pretty, pretty impressive, pretty amazing. So, um, and some of the COVID work we're doing now is actually quicker than that, so. Great. So maybe one clear, question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Someone had a question if there's uh, overnight shifts available, and I want to say yes, there are. Uh, <laughs> you have to throw that <laughs> so As we progress forward with these uh, larger projects, uh, especially collaborating with these uh, well-known established vaccine companies, we're definitely going to have opportunities uh, for more regular off-shift uh, work. So yes, that's a definite yes. Hey, Jen, do you know how many people we currently have here at Bayview? We have, um, last week it was 113, and I guess after yesterday's hire, I'm guessing we're closer to like maybe 118, 120. Wow. Yeah. And yep. uh, I don't know if there's any forecast, but um, yeah, we're hiring, so it's going to be more than that. Hiring a lot. There you yeah. go. So maybe um, Chad and Jason, um, what qualities do you, I hate to put you on the spot, no. you're monitoring the questions as well. Um, what qualities do you look for um, when, you're, when you're interviewing candidates um, that, would, that you would want to bring on board that would make you know, your team successful, that would make you know, that person successful? In I, I look for someone that uh, is eager, uh, uber willing to learn, um, willing to kind of, do whatever it takes to, to ensure success of the project. Um, so, uh, Chad? Yeah, so for me, it's, it's I need people who are 
uh, I guess. So it all depends on the level, right? So, so for entry level folks, um, I need people like who Jason just mentioned, right? They need to be willing to learn. They need to be excited about it. Um, but then, you know, I also need folks who are flexible, adaptable, um, can, can go from, from one area to another, from one project to another and, you know, understand what, what they're doing and why, um, you know, as, as you get, as you get, uh, to the upper, you know, the higher level positions, um, you know, obviously I would, I would look for a little bit more experience. Um, but you know, it's all about, it's all about your attitude and all about, all about your energy. And I think that's really important for, for the team here. Yeah. So we're, we're both very worried. Uh, we we focus a lot on the the culture of the team. Um, yes. Yeah. So we make sure that you know you have to be a good mm -hmm. cultural fit as well as a uh, knowledge technical fit. Yeah. Good answer. So I'm just doing a time check. Um, I think we've we've hit a lot of the questions. I think there's a, quite a few questions that have come in around. Um, the next steps. Um, so I don't know if we, Joe or Linda, if you wanted to maybe jump on to kind of talk about, you know, what what the next steps, you know, how to apply and that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Joe, you feel free to chime in as well. I would encourage everyone to connect with us on LinkedIn uh, with any one of us, uh, Joe, Seely, and or I in particular, um, as well as check out our career site. We have all of our positions posted. As BJ mentioned earlier, um, obviously this event is very focused on Bayview. We're doing a lot of hiring there and in our Camden and Rockville locations and obviously have global um, presence and um, different locations throughout the US, Canada and Europe. So please feel free to take a look at, at our site and, um, and Joe and I can, and Jen as well, can follow up and answer any questions that you have. Of course, if we have not gotten to some of your questions today, feel free to reach out to us directly as well so we can make sure we're, we're answering your questions um, and really appreciate all the participation. Joe, yeah, would you just, add anything? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, and just to add to that too, we're gonna get a uh, list of all the attendees and we'll be reaching out with uh, emails as well um, with the uh, benefits included so you'll get some specifics regarding that um, in, in a follow-up email um, but I, I definitely want to thank everybody for uh, for joining uh, I thought this was a really good experience all around yeah thanks to the panelists you guys did a great job <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much to everybody. Uh, this was a great hour. Uh, very interesting. I learned a lot. And I'm sure we had, you know, over 100 people here listening in interested in, in careers with emergent biosolutions. So i um, really happy that uh, so many people got to hear firsthand on, on, you know, what it's like to work there, the type of work you're doing, the culture, you know, all the you know, community uh, work that you're doing. I mean, uh, it sounds like it's not only a, an important, impactful place to work, but you have fun doing it. So um, Chris, I just want to add, I know I was typing away here on these, qu there's a lot of questions. I know Joe was as well, so I, I do apologize to those that we weren't able to get to, but we're certainly happy to follow up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is this, this type of virtual recruiting event for those who are joining, this is, a, you know, an opportunity to, you know, for you to get your questions answered and, and we're going to, you know, work with uh, the team, you know, Linda and her team to make sure that those, those questions help get answered. Um, and uh, like I said before, we're going to provide the video to everybody uh, afterwards. So if you want to rewatch it, you know, if you have an upcoming interview and you want to, again, get uh, Chad's tips on uh, what he's looking for before you walk in the door, this is a great <laughs> place to do it. So we'll make sure we make this accessible to everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we look forward to seeing uh, which of you will be uh, working with Emergent in a couple months to help with uh, all the great work they're doing. Thank you, Chris. Fantastic. Well, this uh, uh, wraps everything up from all of us at BioBuzz. Thank you for joining. And uh, you know, to all of you at Emergent, thank you for you know, giving your time to share the great work you're doing and the opportunities available. And um, again, please uh, you know, follow up with uh, Linda, Joe, and the rest of the team. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.